Now, as my friend just discussed the various historical developments that led to the formulation of the periodic table, but one very important historical development was observed by Moseley in 1913. His observation changed the entire understanding of the periodic table because what he observed was he observed that there is a relationship between the X-ray spectra and the atomic number. Now, what happened was he took high energy electrons and focused them on the target, which was made up of the elements. And on the bombarding of the electrons with the target, the X-rays were produced. So what he did was he tried to find out a relationship between the X-ray frequencies which were emitted and the atomic number. And with that, he came to the conclusion that the square root of the frequency is equal to A into Z minus B. So this was the relationship that he could find out. Now, what is A and B over here? These two are a constant values, where Moseley said that these two values would be exactly the same for any element. The only thing that would change is Z. So what he did was he started plotting the graph between the square root of the frequencies and the atomic number. And what he observed was it was a straight line. Now, when he put forward his theory and his observations to the entire world, everyone was surprised. Why? Because till now, we've been studying that the periodic table was because of the atomic masses or the mass number. But Moseley changed the entire thing by saying that the periodic table is actually based upon the atomic numbers. Now, what happened was when this observation came as a conclusion, then this was the periodic table that we got. Right now in this periodic table, if you see, we have groups and periods. Now, if you look very carefully, there would be 18 groups and seven periods. So this is how this actual periodic table was classified. Now, over here, if you take a look, there are few of the elements which are yet not discovered, but still we have the space for them. So we know that there might be a possibility that these elements would be there. Now, actually, only 114 elements till now have been discovered. So what happened was there was this problem that occurred between the United States of America and the Soviet Union, which is Russia. What happened was they discovered an element with the atomic number 104. Now, Americans said that since they have uh, found that element, they would name it as Rutherfordium. And the Soviet Union people, the Russians said that, no, we have discovered it. So we will name it as Kurchatovium. Now, this was for 104 only. Now, this led to a major, major problem in the world of chemistry because there were two nations now fighting for the name. So what IUPAC did was they came up with a very fine idea of the nomenclature of finding out or assigning the names to the elements which have the atomic number more than 100. So what they did was they gave us the nomenclature rules where they said that number one would be denoted by un, zero would be denoted by nil, and similarly, you will have bi, tri, and all. Now, this is the list that you would be using. Now, using this list, how do you find out the name? Let's see. Now, 104 is 1, 0, and 4. So, there are three numbers in it. So, 1 would be un, 0 would be nil, and 4 over here would be quad. Right. So, you will just merge all of them and add the word IUM after that. Now, why IUM? Whenever IUM is added or whichever element has the word IUM in the end that are supposed to be metals. So in the initial phases, we consider the element that we are going to find out as in metal. But then when we start observing the different physical and chemical properties, that is the time we start saying that, okay, it might be a non-metal, it might be a metalloid. But in the initial phases, we always assume it to be a metal. So not only with 100 atomic numbers or above that, any element in the periodic table that you have, which ends with IUM would always be a metal. Similarly, if I have, say, another uh, atomic number, say, 117. Now, how do I name that again? So, for one, it would be un. For another one, it would be un again. And for seven, it would be sept and IUM. So, it would become un un septium. So, this is how you can do the nomenclature part. Let's bring back the periodic table again, which was 
called as the modern periodic table now now over here there was a certain problem that happened where hydrogen we assumed that we cannot assign a place to hydrogen because of its anomalous behavior every time depending on what conditions or what neighbor elements is it having now if you look at the periodic table the modern periodic table there are certain groups and periods that we discussed now there are blocks also now similar to what we have in our societies where we are living there are particular blocks so similarly in the periodic table also we have blocks the first two groups are classified as s block from group 13 to group 18 it is classified as p block all the elements in the center from 3 to 12 are considered as the d block elements and the ones which are written over here are called as the f block elements now how is this block determined so over here when you write the electronic configuration of a particular element the last electron whichever subshell it enters that is the block now similarly if you take the example of sodium now sodium has the electronic configuration of 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s1 right now the last electron has entered the s subshell so that means this particular element that is sodium would lie in the s block so similar to this you can find out which block a particular element would be there by just finding out the electronic configuration now i'll tell you how to tackle the most difficult problem that a student faces that is to memorize the periodic table now what i'll do is i'll help you memorize the periodic table with the exact positions of the element ready helena ka ruby se fraud bina mango ka strawberry bana rakha bal gaya bin taliban college student get some problem nati pot aasha sab bimar ho se teri puja fall cbi act hero ne aruna kumari ka zed on red on kar diya shishi thi violet car mein feko nahi tha kuda jana kuda gaan wo how was that now there are many many methods available on the net you can google it up or find it on youtube that how you can memorize the periodic table this is my favorite method so i'll just go slow and make you observe it so the first one is helena ka ruby se fraud the second one is bina mango ka strawberry bana rakha group 13 is bal gayab in taliban then it is college students get some problem then it is nati pota asha sab bimar os se teri puja false cbi act hero ne aruna kumari ka zedon redon kar diya shishi thi violet car mein feko neeta kuda jahan kuda dan ho these are the elements that you should know so this is if you know it it's perfect now you must be wondering why exactly do we need to memorize the periodic table because there are many many physical properties that we'll be dealing with and i would be telling you what are the periodic trends in that so you don't have to memorize the properties of each and every element you can just check the trend in that particular group and this is what is termed as the periodicity so if i define periodicity it is the basic reoccurrence of the similar properties of an element after certain regular intervals when the elements are arranged in the increasing order of atomic number that is what is called as periodic properties now there are numerous physical properties which show periodic variations such as melting point boiling point density enthalpy of vaporization enthalpy of fusion but all these are indirectly related to the electronic configurations but what we will be dealing with is the physical properties which are directly dependent on the electronic configuration such as the atomic radius the valencies the ionization enthalpy the electron gain enthalpy and the electronegativity so these are the five or six properties that we'll be taking up in this chapter now if i summarize the oxidation states and their correlation with the metals and the nonmetals you just have to memorize eight numbers that is if i have a number line from 1 to 8 and suppose this number line indicates the number of valence electrons now just by looking at the number of valence electrons you can easily predict what would be the oxidation number or whether it be a metal or a nonmetal or a metalloid now how would you do that if the valence electrons are 1 2 or 3 the oxidation states would be plus 1 plus 2 or plus 3 because they would want to lose the electron to gain the stability by having the noble gas configuration similarly the ones which have 5 6 and 7 would have the oxidation states as minus 3 minus 2 and minus 1 now 
the ones which have the plus oxidation states would always act as metals and the ones which have the negative oxidation states would always act as the non-metals. Now, there is something left with the valence electrons as 4. Now, the ones which have 4, they are probably the metalloids or the semi-metals because they can have the uh, oxidation states as plus 4 or minus 4 depending on the neighboring atoms. So, that is why they are the metalloids which behave as metals and non-metals. And the last one, that we have is the valence electrons as 8 and we all know that it would be a noble gas. So, this is how you can correlate the number of valence electrons, the oxidation states and the metal and non-metal characteristics.